So I guess um I should start to say uh congratulations on being shortlisted. I'm so hi David. Um uh I had no doubt that this film was going to be shortlisted, but I was so so happy that it was. So congratulations to you both. Um, Thank you, Joey. And you've been a day one like uh, alchemist uh <laughs> whisperer. Thank you. <laughs> sure. I yeah, my pleasure. There's um we always uh I tell people all the time that usually every week we have friends over to you know, we like watch drag race or we watch like we have like we've been having like Christmas movie watching and we've been doing like a lot of like Oscar y films and stuff. And so usually I'm the person who obnoxiously picks everything. And uh <laughs> I showed them your movie and I was like, I'm just like, you know, it's 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 uh heavy but very rewarding. And they were like, okay, they were very intrigued and I didn't tell them anything about it. And uh when I watched uh when I sort of was watching them watch the movie, they were so unbelievably at attention. And uh when it was over, we sort of I don't want to say sat in silence, but I could tell that they have a lot to say. And they did. Yeah. And we had like a long I think discussion about the movie the whole time for a while afterwards and um so I guess that's a comment saying that people are having a very good response to it but also I wanted to know from both of you since the movie has dropped on streaming um you know you have uh you know super famous people doing talkbacks Meghan Markle you know all in a day I guess I just wanted to know from you um receiving the response to this movie because I I I was thinking about that ever since um, I spoke with you last time, Miss On, and I was just curious, like receiving it, because I think it's it's uh, lends itself very much to a high emotional response. Yeah, I mean, you know, most shorts again don't don't get on a platform with two hundred and thirty million people, sure. um, and 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 when it's this level of of emotional fidelity. Um, you know, you are rolling the dice, you know, in, in this age where, where, where people seem to have strong opinions on everything, you know, but, but what's happened is that we, and, 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 and leading that is, is David himself poured humanity onto film mm -hmm. and, and, and humanity was received um, in, in all its forms, whether it's people that are working through some problems whether it's a kind of conversations you're having with you and your friends or uh, peers and colleagues that are in the in this industry that recognize um, that this type of story isn't always put on the screen mm. and, and and responded to that uh, in, in in due course. Um, I, I, I don't know how, how you feel, David, but that's that's been my general feeling since it's come out. Yeah, I think the thing that has taken me aback, having had my own personal journey with grief and loss, is just how much shame and how much of the unspoken there mm. is surrounding an inevitable part of life. Um, you know, we 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 know of the shame that comes along with abuse, whether it be physical or, or mental. Um, w uh, we know of the shame that comes along with uh, neurodivergence or learning mm. difficult, you know, these, these things that have uh, mental health, these things that have come up in the last few years as cultural conversations. But I have to say, grief and loss as something that people feel they have to battle with privately mm -hmm. in a way that is laced with shame um, and that gets exacerbated by a kind of attitude of get on with it or get over it. Um, that I think is the thing that I honestly didn't know was as prevalent until this film came along and became the catalyst for conversations I've been having of people still almost whispering mm. and saying, yeah, I, 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 I love the fact that that film gave me the license to admit that four years after losing my parent, my brother, my uncle, 
I still have these moments where I collapse in a puddle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's because society somehow has indoctrinated us into the idea of you should be over that by now. And it just doesn't play mm -hmm. by those rules. Yeah, there is something that uh, we almost like apologize when we talk about grief like i'm so sorry to inconvenience you but this is what i'm going through right. and it's sort of like <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. sort of like i remember like a couple of years ago i lost my mom and it was sort of like the when you say like you know being overcome with that emotion it is so that emotion is so sneaky and it is so um it, it, it's almost it's treacherous almost because i remember there was one time i was leaving my day job a job I no longer work at and it was like a couple of weeks afterwards and I was w waiting at an elevator and I just started like crying for no reason mm, and it was like mm. I wasn't even thinking about stuff um and I and I do remember looking around and I was like okay I am by myself and I was just like why did I like look around and like almost apologize for my own emotions um so yeah um, yeah um yeah I mean the other I, thing I wanted to add, add, add to that is is time Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people now it's been out of the world one of the things i've been trying to articulate it but i think over the last few days i've got it a lot of people have really thought about time and what i mean is what do you do with the time you ha you have mm -hmm. and what do you do with the time you spend uh with those you care about and you know funnily enough and i think all all, all of us on this call are, are dog owners um you know my my dog nelson is uh turning seven and New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I um, spotted some greys on his face and they're beginning mm -hmm. to come and his his breed, they suddenly just go all white. And, you know, one, one, one of, one of the, 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 the great tragedies of, of canines, I would say, is how, how short they are with us, right? Yeah. Um, especially if, you, if, if they become a part of your family, like, like I believe they do for many. And it, it, it took me to a place of really quite deep sadness and i realize it it is about that that time piece mm -hmm. and i believe that this this film has made people um hopefully question what is time and what are they going to do with it uh above and beyond just grief is yeah. it whilst they are here or our loved ones are here what are we going to do with that and i think that's an important thing for this 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 film to do yeah there is something about like you know there's that cliche phrase of like you know like living your life every day as if it was your last but when when you mm. see something like when you see it experience like david's character experiences experiences it i feel like that's a completely different animal and sort of uh visually seeing that it's it's very confrontational um and i think that goes even deeper than just having that sort of notion in your head all the time um David, I did want to ask you. I am a big, I'm a, I'm a really big fan of yours. I spoke with you many a year ago about uh, Les Mis. Um, I think that's a completely different take on that character. I still think about that. Um, you are a great uh, orator. You're somebody. I'm a, I'm a voice and speech nerd, so I'm really into how people speak and how they use their voice as as something whether it's like a weapon or it's it's a, a suit of armor but um i think you're very powerful with your words and your speaking voice and in this film because the tragedy that your character faces um you telegraph so much with your face and your eyes and um a character who i don't know maybe doesn't want to speak to certain people sometimes and i, I guess i just wanted to know how that changed your Pers not perspective on the character but like just perspective about how approaching a character who is dealing with so much um high emotions like that just because i don't think i've ever seen you play a character like this before yeah and that's exactly why i was uh, very nervous about doing it mm -hmm. um I, I knew that it was going to require not me suiting up to play mm -hmm. the role okay. but to shedding in order to play the role and not just shedding but shedding and then cracking open my heart and just saying look this this is what this has looked like for me mm -hmm. um, i think you know i i've had the blessing of stepping into characters that 
are very far away from my own experience, whether it be culturally, historically, uh, professionally, and you step into that world and you try to learn as much as you can in order to be able to project what that person may be going through. This was, I mean, you use the, the perfect word there, Joey, of, um, of it being treacherous. Mm. It, it, it's something you get ambushed by. It, it's something that hijacks you. Um, and it doesn't care uh -huh. about where you are, who you are, what you are um and it's it's you it's not something or someone you talk to yeah um it, it is just inherent i personally have come to the realization that it is not something you get over it is something you come to learn to live with uh, that loss, that grief, and therefore it it is kind of wordless, unless mm. you find someone with whom you can communicate about it with, and that only happens when you are segueing into the healthier part of loss, grieving, and mourning. And this film is about someone who is on a journey towards maybe being able to be in a healthier place about it. He is hiding uh, in plain sight by mm -hmm. being an Uber driver. He is remaining connected to humanity whilst having the license to be disconnected from humanity by the very virtue of the nature of that job, mm -hmm. that circumstance. Um, and and so it's a kind of a perfect setup for showing the wordlessness and the loneliness that grief can engender and also how you have people walking around wounded bleeding but not in a way that gives you if you're a, a, a someone who has empathy gives you the license to take care of them yeah um and so the the wordlessness is is inherent certainly to my grief journey i lost both of my parents within a three-year period yeah. and um because my mom had a, a brain aneurysm that left her in a vegetative state for three years that grieving process was incredibly protracted and weird it was saying goodbye without having really said goodbye and so when she actually died it was kind of a relief mm. but also the end of something and so then my dad three years later had colon cancer went into remission for a bit but then eventually died from it and that was a sort of more orthodox um grieving process which was kind of healthier because there was a clear moment of it ending and, and the both things colluded to to create a process i'm still in <laughs> and i think i always will be you know anniversaries are hellacious moments mm -hmm. of success you know i mean should we go on to be oscar nominated and win i i i've got to tell you uh, uh, like Missan and the gray hairs on his dog's face in my mind is what does that minus them mean mm, mm, mm. But, but because it's it feels wrong and i'm kind of i'm a i'm yeah it's uh it just feels wrong you know yeah there's a there is you know that when we are prepared to lose somebody like i feel like there's countless way everybody has advice about it everyone had you can read something you can watch something but i feel like I think grief is personal and I think grief is uh, singular to everybody and losing um, 
I mean, David, you lost two people. Those two losses are different. My parents are both gone. Those two losses were different. Um, and I don't think you are, I don't think you were honestly truly prepared for that and sort of, I don't think anyone is really truly prepared for the aftershocks of it. Um, like mm -hmm. my father's birthday was the beginning of the month. Um, and just thinking about it, um, it's weird. It's a weird thing to evolve and live with. It's, it's, it's really strange. Um, and I will just say that something that I have been thinking for a long time, because I've saw, I saw this movie for the first time, you know, a couple of months ago and sort of, um, something that I take from it, it was something that I initially thought, but it, it hits, you know, hard later that it's just like just walking down the street and i see a bunch of people i don't know what's going on with them i don't know any internet like i took an uber ride yesterday and i thought of the movie again and like mm -hmm. i had a really good conversation with with the driver and sometimes i thought i don't have conversations with the driver and i was just like mm -hmm. i don't know if this ride that we're sharing together is just par for the course for their day or not um, and I think what the movie really engenders is this really just, I don't know, it's, I, I, I think of myself as a very empathetic, empathetic person, but I feel like it made that empathy in me dial up to like a million. And I think a lot of people are really feeling that too. Um, that's not, that's well, not God knows, uh, <laughs> no, no, but what God knows the world needs are right now. So to, to if we if, if we can amplify every single word that you just said to yeah. the kind of um viewership that hopefully this film is is receiving then david and i's job is done yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. above and beyond anything else you know um people can receive it and decode it in their own way but it, it's definitely leading them onto a journey that is going to help them yeah and it's worth just saying very quickly, you know, this is what we're talking about now is partly why I became an actor. It is incredibly mm -hmm. rare to have conversations akin to this, whether it be under this circumstance or after work that I've had the privilege of doing. Um, I do believe the storyteller's job uh, at its height is to hold a mirror up to humanity. And so, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I just I just continue to come back to the miracle of what Missan has achieved in 18 minutes um, oh, yeah. of, of being able to elicit what you just talked about, Joey, what we're feeling from other people. Um, and it's the alchemy of two guys meeting their experiences, mm -hmm. coalescing, the the um his incredible ability with image and his emotional intelligence when it comes to fighting i mean i was scared about the 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 moment in the film that you know that is laced in tragedy should we show that can we show that why would we show that and he was very clear and, and gosh, that's what you're looking for in a storyteller, someone whose vision is so acute and confident that you can go on the ride with them. The fact that this is Miss Anne's first foray into filmmaking is what makes this kind of mind blowing. Uh, yeah. um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, just just worth stating that this this is this this is this is certainly a moment for me. And the fact that it comes in in the form of a short film is, is yeah. Cool. Kind of even more. Well, I mean, just just adding to what what David said is, um, I don't think I'll be making any comedies anytime <laughs> soon. I, <laughs> it's not it's not really me um, for the time being. But what I what, 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 what the reason for that is, filmmaking has never been entertainment for me. I don't go to the cinema to have a jolly. It's been survival. It's been survival for me my whole life. You know, what I take from great art, uh, if I can find great art, is the pieces of the puzzle that allow me to understand why I'm here, regardless of the scars on my back. Yeah. And, and, and 
of so of course when i'm given the privilege to work with with someone like david and 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 to have the 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 resources to to have the whole team to come together to tell a story my thing is to look for that place that will help people go into that place of survival and out into a place where they can learn to love themselves and thrive um yeah. and if you can do that through something that is seemingly entertainment then it's even mm. better oh I could talk to you guys forever. <laughs> I really could. I know this is so deep and so layered, but I should let you guys go. Thank you so much for letting me talk to you. Hey. On, uh, David, I'm a huge fan, like I said before. So thank you again for your time. I'm so happy. So, so happy this is shortlisted. And I'll be even happier when it's nominated. So um, uh, thank you again for your time, your generosity. Thank, thank you for you. sharing everything. Joey, Joey, never change. You're a real one. Honestly, <laughs> thank you. I couldn't if I yeah. tried. So <laughs> Good. All right. Good, Thanks, good, guys. good. All right, cheers. Bye. Bye, Jimmy.